Welcome to Weights, Tolerances, and Certificates. I'll be your presenter today, and my name is Ann Crowley. This webinar will be divided into two parts. Part one is the explanation of different tolerances for weights, and part two are, is certificates. So let's start. Part one, explanation of different tolerances for weights. first thing to consider is do you have any regulatory requirements or which regulatory requirement would be best or most applicable for you. So depending on where you're located and uh, what your application is, one of these regulatory requirements will be the best. So let's see, OIML R111, this is a worldwide intergovernmental, intergovernmental organization. So if you're anywhere besides the United States, this might be the best choice for you. If you're doing business worldwide, you might want to look at these guidelines also to make sure that your product can be used uh, anywhere that you might be selling to. ASTM E617, this is classes of weights and mass standards that are used in laboratories and field standards not governed by NIST Handbook 105-1 and NIST Handbook 44. This is primarily used for the higher accuracy class weights uh, here in the United States. So if there is a requirement internationally that you're going to be doing business in the United States, for instance, you might want to look at these guidelines also just to make sure that you're, you've, you've considered all requirements. And then NIST Handbook 105-1 is used for legal for trade in the United States. What else might be important for your tolerance that you'd be choosing? How important is the accuracy for your application and any applicable government guidelines. Well, what we're talking about here is, you know, not only do you have your requirements that are, are controlled by the government, referring to the OIML, NIST, or ASTM, but there could also be other government type guidelines or other corporate type guidelines that might be important for which weight you, you pick. For instance, if you're doing pharmaceutical work, you might need to refer to the FDA or if you're doing uh, transportation or work for state agencies, you might be look, need to look at the state requirements. So you need to look at any possibility, any you know, references that might help you pick the right tolerance. And also you need to look at the product itself. How accurate are your weighments? Are you weighing on a balance with a high resolution? Well then you're going to need a, a weight with a better tolerance. The tolerance should be one-third to one-quarter the tolerance of the, of the resolution of the balance. So let's look at a particular reference here. In front of me here, I have a 30-pound uh, weight. And this is a stainless steel weight. Now we sell this, so this can be purchased in many different classes. For example, you could purchase this as a class 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, or class F weight. So here in this chart, we listed the different tolerances in milligrams. So a class 1 would be 25 milligrams, a class 2 is 50, class 3 is 100, class 4 is 250, class 6 is 1,000 milligrams, and class F is 1,400. So once again, think about what you're weighing and think about your, your balance resolution that you might be using this weight on. So would one of these classes resolution be best for you? To explain this further, Let's look at some examples of these tolerance in a more literal mode uh, or visual mode. Um, the 30 pound weight as a class one would have this very small tolerance that you see in this weighing dish. Um, that's 25 milligrams. And so when you actually see 25 milligrams weighed out, you can see how tight that tolerance is. That would help you understand that a finish for a stainless steel weight versus a cast weight you know, we do sell a 30 pound cast weight, but the finish on that has paint that if, if some paint chipped off or, or something got in the groove of the paint, that could be more than that tolerance right there in itself. That's why you cannot buy a class, uh, a 30 pound weight as a class one in cast finish. So you have to go to the stainless finish. And so these are the different tolerances as you work through them. The class two, as you can see, there's a little bit more in the weighing dish. That's double the 25 milligrams, we're now up to 50 milligrams. A class three, once again, we've doubled it again, 100 milligrams. Class four, 200 milligrams. And then on up class F and class six, once again, you can see that you can visually see 
the, the ceiling material or the material that's the difference between these two weights. So when you look at your weights, you know, be considerate on how you're handling them too because if you look at this and you envision that you've dropped your weights or you've dented your weights or you've damaged your weight in any way or you've, you've handled your weights so there's extra paint or surface finish on it, when you look at how tight these tolerances are, that shows that you do need to respect your weights. And just as an overview of that, here's an example of all those tolerances stacked up in the different dishes here. Um, what would be the best for your application? You'll have to be the best judge of that. You have to consider which tolerance or which class is going to be best for you. Do you need OIML? Do you need ASTM? Or do you need NIST? What regulations are you are governed by? Do you need to work for the federal government? Do you need to do something for FDA? And, and what is the product that you're weighing? How accurate is the mix? Um, are you using some hazardous chemical in it and so your tolerances need to be much tighter? Are you mixing paint where just a little bit of variation is actually going to physically change the color? So uh, take this all into consideration in picking the right tolerance. Thank you for viewing part one. My name is Ann Crowley, and I'll be happy to help you with any follow-up questions, and here's my email address. Thank you.